All right, we are just getting ready to get going. Mr. Arnett, how are you? All right, we're good. All right, we're going to... All right. All right, we got to turn that down. Uh, there we go. And we'll wait for a few people to come in here and... Uh, Let's see what we got. And okay. this week, hey, at least we're not a flagpole this week. Uh, Paul Campbell, what's up? Out in Oregon, man. Portland. Hey, let me tell you, um, it's uh, very interesting to learn how to do these things. You know, if you've never done this Facebook Live, it's, uh, we, you know, we, we've got all the best intentions of, of putting on a great production. <laughs> and in, in a few weeks, a few months, however long it takes, it's going to be amazing. I mean... How many chords do we have out? Well, you know, uh, I'm reading. I'm reading a book right now about failure. Okay. Yeah. And I think we're 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 nailing the failure piece of it. We are. I mean, look, we got the fancy cameras. Like so we're this, a little bit late. The Osmo, uh, uh, all we, that. We were we're supposed to start at four. We're late. So yeah. So failure yeah. is a beautiful thing. We're learning from it every day, and and we're going to get better. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, we're well, running late, but. Uh, Hey, well, hold on, you forgot. Hey, it's happy oh, yeah. hour. That's right, happy, happy hour, hour real estate. The Lugum Boggles. We uh, got the Line and Kugels. Line and uh, Kugel. Wisconsin Red. Pretty good. Um, Not as good as yeah. last week, though. Last week's was it was awesome. It was, was it strawberry something. I sound like a girl. I sound like my wife. But it's been it's been a fun afternoon, and this guy's going to get really upset about uh, not getting this camera th thing figured out. I think it's funny. Yeah. I think it's really funny. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I, as much as we spent on this camera, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, daggum, I gotta, I gotta watch my mouth because my mother watches. Exactly, uh, exactly. And, you know, I tell you, um, I, I did come up this week with a great thing that I think I'm gonna implement to make me more productive. I really am. Okay. I'm gonna take cold showers every morning. I, I, I was listening to Adam Carolla Anybody knows me knows I love Adam Carolla, and he is convinced that 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 his productivity up man when you just shot and get those endorphins running. Yeah. Hey. Now I heard it's really good for you. It's um, like coffee without the shakes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, I need all the help I can get. Well, we've got things. Uh, uh, ben Styles, I appreciate that uh, uh, comment there, buddy. Love you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the market. We're going to talk about some uh, the inventory. Collier's going to bring some of that stuff up. Yeah, we got absolutely. Some, some credit score topics that we're going to discuss, as well as uh, <laughs> some down payment oh. options that a lot of people don't realize. Um, love you, love you, Taylor Arnett. That's uh, oh that's my god, you, that's your daughter. That's unfair, yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, so we want to want to go ahead and kick things off. Uh, we're we're running a little bit late. If you didn't hear us, because our technical because difficulties went to, went to went to Georgia Tech, and uh, but anyway, uh, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about. You know uh, the options at these different uh, credit score levels uh, and what's available to you because I think there's a lot of misconception in the market that you know that the difference between seven and seven thirty and seven twenty and seven ten they just don't matter. Yeah, but they matter just as much as what we find on six hundred to five ninety. Yeah, and it really depends on the loan program that you're looking at on how much that affects you. But every time we we start a, a loan file, we're going to look at credit. And credit, your credit score is probably the biggest piece of information that we're going to use. Um, you know, you can get credit cards and you can get car loans, uh, and your interest rates might be a little bit higher just because you have you have poor credit. But with a mortgage, that might exclude you from getting a loan at all. Um, and really, we start off around six hundred. We've got we've got a little a little sheet here that. We'll that link we can it. We'll link it. To you. I say because I'm used uh, to YouTube, but I, we'll link it down below. So um, it, and it kind of gives you a diagram of the different loan programs available. But you know, from from 600 to 619, we're really looking at FHA. Um, and this is nationwide, really, yeah, right? I mean, yeah. we're not talking just Birmingham. And I know there in in this market, I know there's some lenders that do loans below that. But I'm telling you, the the terms on those loans are going to be difficult. Why is They're, that? Uh, because well, I, I mean, as an agent, I love the fact that they can go out there and boy, you can you can have terrible credit. I mean, uh, and some of these people have terrible credit. I'd love to put them in a house because that's how I get paid, right? Exactly. So, but for you, but it's also not doing what's right by them either, well, right? Yeah, I personally don't agree with it just because you're going to pay a lot more in interest, you're going to pay a lot more in fees, and you're kind of going to get stuck into that cycle that we uh, that we saw years and years ago, where people sometimes it's better to wait. 
Sometimes it's better to wait, work on your credit, save some money up, and get in a better financial situation before you buy a house. I mean, it's really, it's really that simple. Mm -hmm. uh, but for us, we're looking at 600 to 619, 620. Uh, we're looking at FHA loans from there, from 620. What and about up. VA? Uh, I'm a veteran, bad credit. You know, hey, because I mean, if anybody knows anything about like military bases, I grew up in the Hampton Roads area, and payday lenders and all those things are all over near those bases. Now, now VA sometimes we can get away with a lower credit score, but uh, really they like to see a 620 as well. So 620 kind of opens you up to a lot of things, but your your FHA, VA, USDA is going to be uh, probably the best option. Um, all right. Some conventional loans. But depending on your down payment, it's going to affect the mortgage insurance. And we're going to talk about that okay. in just a second. Up to seven hundred, you're really looking at seven hundred to seven thirty nine. Um, we're looking <laughs> at uh, conventional loans, FHA, VA, um, a lot of things, and those those will depend on the down payment as well. Um, and then anything over seven forty to eight fifty, you're you. You can any loan option available. Any loan, so there's really no difference between you know. So I love. You know, we all have them in our family and friends. They go, oh, you know, I have uh, Class A credit. You know, so it really doesn't matter if they're 760. Because I like to beat my wife. Not, I didn't mean beat my wife. That is, I didn't mean beat all. my wife. Yeah. But like, I like to beat her on credit score right. or anything we do. And I'll tell you, nine times out of ten, the wife has a higher credit score. I'll just throw that and out. Why, go ahead. I want, you know, I mean, it's because we were stupid in college, right? Yeah, I just, I think they're smarter with their money. Well, we, we needed a free t-shirt, so we got a credit card. Yeah. yeah. There's no other reason yeah. when I was at Auburn to get a, a credit yeah. card. Now, talk about one of the biggest things, you know, because I hear is that people say, well, I need to get from, let's say, 630 to 640, yeah, that's... right? And talk about debt utilization. Yeah, and you know, and there, and there was one thing um, that I had come up this week. I had somebody calling me about their interest rates, and uh, and then the agent called me. It's on a purchase transaction. They had some questions about it, mm -hmm. and it was interesting because uh, you know there are some loan programs where you can improve your scores at at, at twenty. There's twenty point in increments. So, for example, at six sixty, things looks a little bit better. Six eighty, seven hundred, seven twenty, seven forty. There was different adjustments to the interest rate. They might be really small and subtle. But they're still there. So, uh, you know, we do have a service with our company that's free of charge where uh, we can get you hooked up with somebody that will analyze your credit report and tell you what you need to do. It's not y'all. It's a third party. No, it's, right. it's, it's inside of Fairway. Okay. Yeah, it's inside of Fairway. Now, it, it's different from other credit repair companies where they charge you 150 60 bucks well, a month. It's like the tax company. And they, do the, work, always, they right? do the work for you. Now, we'll give you the plan, and you have to go do the work. So it's a little bit different, but... Uh, Use it, utilizing that with some clients right now, and they really, really love it. So, but go, going back to my question though, um, uh, you, you know, is the debt utilization? Because here's a problem I, I see: is that a lot of people sit there and they go, well, "I'm just going to put it all on one credit card, and I'm going to cancel all my other credit cards because I'm trying to get my credit right." But talk about almost 75 percent of the score is, to a large degree, I should say, is debt utilization. What does that mean? What is debt utilization? Well, I'll tell you, that, and the easiest way to manipulate your credit score is through uh, it's your revolving debt utilization. So installment loans, student loans, things like that are not going to matter. That's what but we're talking about. Okay, okay balances, gotcha. It's your credit card balances. Uh, you can manipulate, I say that, you're not really, but uh, you kind of are manipulating your credit score by maybe paying down those balances right. to 25 to 30% of the credit limit available. Right, right, right. Uh, some people are also able to call the credit card company and ask them to increase their limit. So that makes their utilization look better. Okay. So when we're dealing with credit score and credit card balances only, okay, it's negative to be over 50%. A lot of people don't realize that. Right. So it's negative to be so over 50% of the limit. So your balance is over 50%. That. I mean, so if, if we have a 20,000. So you got a $20,000 credit limit on a, uh, Citibank credit card. Okay. As soon as you roll over ten thousand on the balance, that's going to negatively affect your score. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but keeping it around twenty to thirty percent. Yep. So twenty thousand. That's going to be six thousand dollars. If right. you stay in that range, that's going to help your score the most. So we and we want to let one of the things. Anybody knows me. I know I play the credit card game all the time for for points to be able to travel. And one of the things you'll notice when I when I go to my Credit Karma, and I'm just playing with that. By the way, these guys would tell you, don't 
really just credit karma is just it's not the actual score uh, it's a it's a formula they have but anyway um is if you're working on getting that credit score up make sure you let it roll to the end of the term right uh term in other words let the bill come out and then that's what's reported to the credit bureaus well it depends it depends on when those creditors report to the bureau so some of them have different cycles where they report monthly at a certain time or every other month so depending on when your bills due, they might they might catch you in the middle of a cycle and report that balance because you know the question we get all the time is is talking about you know when they when they go to their because everybody's using credit karma and whether we like yeah. it or we yeah. don't it's like it's like as a realtor zillow right they're using it so we got to use it we got to at least acknowledge it uh but there's a difference in the scores and it's usually am i right on this it's usually because certain creditors are not reporting to one or the other yeah i think i think there are i think our mortgage report is more <laughs> uh, encompassing of okay. Oh yeah, he said. He said I got him fifty three, fifty thousand free miles. There you go. Yeah. Hey, actually, you know, great story. He he goes and does what I said, which is great. I like that, Paul. But he he wanted to always go to the what was it, the Oscars, right? He goes to the Oscars. He uses the points to take his wife to the Oscars. There you go. I mean, I was like, <laughs> don't tell my wife. <laughs> she she doesn't need to know that we can do other things with him because yeah, you know, yeah yeah I yeah. like cruising. So, you know, the credit karma thing, it's, it's a consumer... Uh, hey, Milton Palacios. You remember Milton? Yeah. From the cruise, from Summit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You go. He's over in Spain right now. That's good. Yeah. That's good. He's a great guy. So I would, say, I would just say that the credit karma thing, if you're in between six and 700 on a credit karma, it could be a lot different than our mortgage <laughs> reports. What I've seen, 700 above, they're, they're pretty similar. So uh, I wouldn't trust that wholly, but uh, yeah, there are some discrepancies between what that score they're generating and typically the score we pull. And talk about the importance of, does a, does a the average borrower need to really worry about Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac? I mean, when they're first talking to a lender, do they need to worry about any of that stuff? Or do they need to ask the lender, hey, just give me some options, right? Well, yeah, I think, uh, I think ultimately the details of the loan are, are what you're going to be concerned about, not necessarily where it's going. But, that's, but the credit score is where we start off to kind of figure out where you should be. Um, so, like for example, that six six to seven hundred, a lot of times is going to be lower six hundred. A lot of times going to be FHA over seven hundred. A lot of times we're going to try to lean conventional, just because it's financially a better decision. Well, and, and exp uh, extrapolate on that big words, right? Uh, on that, in terms of because oftentimes I'll you and I'll talk, and we'll talk about the difference between ninety six and a half, which is three and a half percent down FHA, and then we talk about five percent down as a conventional yeah. loan. Talk about that because it, to me, I, I think of the fact that uh, when you're putting that 5% down, you're getting the equity. Yeah. As opposed to 3.5% with upfront mortgage insurance. Right, now there's there's some de there's a lot of details in here, but uh, you know, the 3.5% down is gonna be an FHA. We do have 3% down on a conventional loan, um, but on the FHA, you do have that upfront mortgage insurance, so you're really not going to have that three and a half percent equity right when you buy the house because some of that upfront mortgage insurance is going to eat, eat some of up. that up. But um, on the three to five percent down, you truly do have that equity walking in. But that's when we kind of look at that and mm -hmm. uh, make that decision up front based on credit score and a combination of of the down payment. And, and there's there's a couple other things in there. But um, would you say a couple things? Just give us briefly. Briefly, you know, you're looking. I'm at, curious. You're looking at income, debt to income ratios. Uh, FHA is a little more lenient on credit, which is the reason we said that. But they're also a little more lenient on debt to income ratios, okay. which means that your debt to income is a little higher than. So, than so maybe. within the federal loan programs, we can have. I mean, you would think federal government's the same everywhere, but not the case. That each program, federally backed program, has its own rules. Yeah, so FHA is the one that's federally backed, and it, it'll it'll typically go up a little over 50%. Fannie Mae now will go to 50% of your debt-to-income, which basically means all of the liabilities that you have on your credit report plus the mortgage payment divided by your income, if that's too much details to follow. Well, hey, it's, but it's, it's good but for it's me. Pretty, pretty simple, though. But dude, talk about, too, because I, I know this is the next thing I'm wondering, though, when you're talking about this, because I get it a lot of times about VA, right? They go, well, I've earned the VA. But that, from what I understand, the VA is not always the best deal. 
right? You, just because you got it doesn't mean you got to use it. That's true. VA is a very good deal, but it, you know you really have to lay them out side by side and uh, see what's going to make financially the costs, most sense for you. Yeah, right? there's definitely still some cost for you on the VA, uh, unless you're exempt from the funding fee. And what would cost um, somebody to be exempt? Just that correct? If you're if you're receiving any disability from the VA, and obviously a VA is going to be previous military, but if you're receiving any disability, yeah. then you're exempt from the funding fee. And that funding fee could range from around 2% to 3% This could be paid by somebody. Amount, and, and it's going to roll back into your loan. Oh, so you're actually even, you're rolling it back in, right? Yeah, you're rolling it unless you're exempt from it, then it's zero. Okay, and then the other thing I was going to ask you about credit score, how there are, you know, if, I know we got some folks watching from around the country, but let's talk about Alabama, right? And you get USDA and you get Alabama Housing. Yeah. What impact does credit score have on those two programs? Well, Alabama Housing, uh, you know, that's a set program. So the rates are fixed, the terms are fixed. All the lo lenders that are approved for that is, uh, they, they kind of play by the same rules, and that's a 620 on the Alabama right, Housing. Right, 620. And then okay. the. Um, so that was, was a big number we talked about. about. USDA. USDA. Yeah, USDA is going to be the same, and, and that's going to be for rural areas, which we use that a, a well, bit more. Hold on, hold on. Rural areas? Well, no, technically, uh, technically. Technically, rural areas. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure in 1930. Right. They were, right. Just so you know, if you're not living where there are nine McDonald's right in a row, you're or 12, probably or twelve Starbucks. Yes, you're probably in a USDA area. Right. And it, by the way, there is a great Google. You, I, well, I say there's great Google. There's there is the great Google. Uh, but there is a. I just go type in USDA loan lookup, mm -hmm. and there's a tool on their website where you can go pull it and see if the exactly thing yeah. qualifies. Yeah, you could plug an address in there. Yeah, but the whole idea that USDA, I mean, all I think about is like milking cows when I think of USDA. Yeah, yeah. Or like, beef. why are they in the... Uh, or beef, yeah. Beef, well, beef. But so I what, prefer so milking kind of, cows. What kind of updates do we have on the market right now? Oh, boy. Well, you know, and so for you folks around the country, it's it, it's going to be similar. Uh, we never, if, if you're out of this, uh, out, even out of Birmingham, I think, to a certain degree, we never went up real bad and we never went down real bad. We didn't have the wide... Things is like Paul Campbell out in uh, Oregon or yeah, Nevada, Nevada, Florida, New York, California, Had which is big good. swings, big swings. But the biggest problem we got right now, housing inventories shot down fourteen percent. We were at about eh, roughly about fifty eight hundred six thousand houses on the market at the end of December of sixteen. The end of December of seventeen, we're down to about eh, roughly right above five thousand houses. So it was about a fourteen thousand home wow i mean a 14 percent decrease in the number of homes available that's huge and we can't take much more of it right but what's happening is that the with the market basically demand is still there we all still want hey it's america we all want yeah but what we're what we're seeing though is that there's nowhere for you to go i mean I, i'm working with this great couple uh down in clear right now and and for instance you know they have nowhere to go we just sold the house and they have nowhere to go. And, you know, that's the best thing I've been with my wife. I've been telling her, I'm having to feed her stats like I'm about to tell you because she's trying to put me, you know, in a, we're going to be living at your house or at the, uh, at the Motel 6 because we're going to end up without a house. But Yeah, I had, I had somebody talking today like they've, they've got an idea of what they want to buy, but they're worried about, um, they're worried about selling their house and then not having anywhere to go. Which so true. If, if they get their house on the market and they sell it quickly, then they have to go out and find something. And if there's not enough on the market, there's not going to be what they want to buy. So what do they do in the interim? Well, they, they, they obviously, we got to put a game plan together. But the biggest thing you can do is utilize a lot of our short-term rental solutions, not ours, uh, the markets, if you will. We have corporate housing out there. You have uh, uh, in-laws. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, stuff like that is temporary. Or a friend's basement, even. It's going to stink. But remember, all moving stinks. No one ever yeah. goes. It was the greatest time maybe, of my maybe life. Maybe there's a market. We set up a rental, and we can move the people in there. Yeah. You know, take care of their stuff. And just leave them there for three or four months while we find, while they we wait for that, that house they, that's coming up on the market. Genius. That, that comes up. It's genius. But now, here, now I'm going to throw a curveball in this. While people are having a hard time, they're having an easy time finding the home. I mean, not finding a home, selling a home, and having a hard time doing it. Prices are rising; they've yeah. risen, you know, at you know three percent now. One thing, the National Association of Realtors, uh, our trade organization, um, uh, the realtors out there, I think that's fine because it's, <laughs> it's uh, they do so much. Uh, there you go, Trey. Yeah, it's yeah. a pink fairway. 
I usually have the favorite group on here, man. I, I'm I'm dropping the ball. I uh-huh. apologize. But what what you know is happening is these prices are rising by three percent, and the National Association of Realtors is telling us, you know, they're expecting one, two, three percent growth year over year now. That's not. It's necessarily at least we're moving in a positive direction. But the problem, real problem that we're going to find is that inflation is starting to kick in. I mean, you and I have talked about for how many years now? They have held back inflation. Yeah, and, and rates haven't moved. But, you know, prices are, like you say, prices are going up. It looks like there's uh, demand in the market, which is going to drive prices. And rates are moving up. So, really, we got a lot of things working to make housing more expensive right now. It is, and, but, but you got, it's going to be selective. And the problem is you, when they find that house, that buyer finds that house, you darn well better go and put your, a strong offer on that house. Because otherwise, you're, what we're finding, unlike in years past, see, it was great 10 years ago when the market's booming and we had three or four offers, but there were 10 other houses you could go to. Not the case here, right? Because we have so few left to go. But, you know, think of it this way. Why is it a good moment for sellers? Because they're going to be able to sell into a strong market for them. Yes. And uh, you know, yeah, and I had some I had somebody send out an email in our company that's talking about how the the, the lower price market, let's say under three hundred thousand, is kind of a uh, it's kind of a seller's market right now, right? Because there's low inventory down there. But the over five, six hundred thousand, maybe seven hundred, eight hundred thousand might be a buyer's market. Because there's not as much demand. Yes, that's right. So what if what if there was some people out there maybe thinking about that dream home in the next two or three years? They could sell in the lower bracket into yep. a... Moving up and into it. Yeah, Even if they, we have to temporarily do something else. In a seller's market down there and then go up and buy in a buyer's market. That would be intriguing. It is. and it, Well, one of the areas that you're going to see that is in like uh, a lot of our higher end in Birmingham. Now, what the funny thing is, if I said five or 600000 believe me, if you're, if you're watching from around the country, you're laughing. That's like their their average sales price, you know. And, hey, that's okay. That's okay. There's there's hope for them, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we college football runs through Alabama, and we we know we that. can laugh about our sales yeah. price. That's fine. Yeah. So, uh, but where I'm getting at is that when we have these gluts, we're going to see what we're expecting six, eight, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars houses. That generation that's coming behind them is not wanting those houses in the same numbers that that generation, two generations yeah, before wanted. Exactly. And so you're going to see prices decrease in certain areas, like you said. I mean, take Mountain Brook, for instance, right? Um, which is, a, you know, one of the, what well, is the most affluent suburb I think we have. Uh, take, for instance, the new tax code, right? You're going to, you're, for instance, that could have a negative effect on prices, right? Why? Because there's more houses over a million dollars, more people making over a million, more people taking mortgages out over a million. Yes. So they're going to be less incentivized to make that move or do whatever. This is not doom and gloom because like you say, the rates, I mean, if you're looking on the low, when I say yeah. lower end. Yeah, I mean, no no question. I don't, I don't see any doom and gloom in this business or this market anytime soon. It's just gonna take longer, right? Yeah, I just, I, you know, there was a lot of worry about when, when things unwind and the, uh, the inflation fears kick in and interest rates start moving. There was a lot of concern about the doom and gloom and how are we going to bounce back from all the, the money that the Fed put in the market to, to, uh, to artificially right. lower these interest rates. But, By the way, know, Megan Stokes, Fowler. I, Me- Megan Fowler, I should say. Yes. Hey, hey. But right She's now, awesome. I don't see it. Right now, I don't see it. Well, yeah, I mean, but the, the good thing is rates. Now, one thing that we are starting to see is more starts by new construction, right? And that's having a good effect on the market. Yeah, I think there's a demand for new construction, which is which is, which is where, why you're seeing And the that. numbers, though, are crazy. I mean, you got a couple neighborhoods out where you and I have talked about. Uh, I don't want to mention names because I don't want – I'm not trying to hurt them. But, <laughs> but they are high as a kite. I mean, they need to drink a few more of these uh, because, you know – Four hundred thousand dollars for a three-bedroom, two-bath is a little much in this market, even because I, I understand what they're saying. What they're seeing is a is a demand, and I'm I'm probably wrong, right? I mean, somebody's going to come in and snap it up. I mean, yeah, you yeah. Know, but it doesn't make sense. You and I, I think, think like we're like what what an idiot, right? But uh, but the market's out of whack in that respect, I think. Uh, and so, in other words, if you're going to buy in these new neighborhoods, you're going to pay more. And you're going to pay a premium than you would have in a market where we didn't have 5,000 listings. We had, what, we, we only four, just put that in perspective, four to five years ago, we were sitting closer to 10,000 listings at yeah. any one time. Yeah. It shows you 
that we basically cut in half yeah. the number of houses that are available. Ten thousand listings down to five thousand. Huh? That's just nuts. Yeah, and, and that that doesn't include the. Uh, and rates haven't moved anywhere. What about I mean, the crap? Rates, rates have gone right? from what? I mean, I think the lowest was probably three, three and a half on right. a thirty-year fixed. If you're under three and a half, you you got a great deal. Um, and now we're, we're we're creeping up towards four, four and a quarter. So that's not a big enough move to to really matter to people. It's just right. the, the inventory. Wait, and let's talk about that. And real. the stock market's killing it. So people are making money somewhere. Are right? you making money? No. How about how about your wife? No. Uh huh? Huh? No. No, she's making off money. the record. Oh yeah. But so I think it's a, it's a it's a still an awesome time for people to get their house on the market. Hopefully, the spring things will get really busy. We we need this chill to come off. I mean, we've we've had some icy temperatures and and the weather's well, been yeah. You're been right. Really cold. You're right because you know what's funny. I don't know if you noticed it with people calling, but we noticed a direct correlation between the weather. I mean, here's the problem: when it turns 32 here, we act like we've never seen. Oh it. yeah, we'll shut down. Right. Yeah. And so people were back out. And I, I mean, we've written offers. Milk left sandwiches. And right. Milk sandwiches. Milk sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amanda, if you're watching, she knows all about it at Publix. Right. Um, and I love how they go get 40 day supplies of medicine. Yeah. I never understood that. And, and not only that, it, you know, why are you stocking up on all this stuff like beer? And I, I actually understand that, but you're going to be able to go to the grocery store in two days. Yeah. It's oh, not yeah, like yeah. in Birmingham you're going to be. Stop but I, I think I think that's gonna that's gonna play a big key when when, when that uh, when, when things warm up and the spring gets back, I think we're gonna see a lot of action. So what other what other numbers do you have for us? Well, you know, uh, really the uh, the appreciation, you know, is the big thing. Is that while we're gonna see three percent appreciation probably mm -hmm. year over year, when you hear these numbers coming from you know the quote unquote experts, if you will, that doesn't mean that hyper locally you can't see a large push in some areas, right? So wherever you live, right, uh, uh, let's say you live in Highland Lakes, right? It doesn't mean Highland Lakes won't increase by 10%. Yeah. While another place, because remember, these are all averages. And, and you know, just really start thinking about um, and getting very, what I call hyper-local. And know your market. Make sure your realtor knows that market. And we'll see prices. And not only that, don't be the, the same truths hold now that they always have. Don't be the biggest in the neighborhood. Don't be the smallest. Be that guy right in the middle. And do the upgrades and the updates that will generate the most interest. Don't, like today, you know, I had a purple a house with purple walls and everything. You know, it's like, it's not going to necessarily hurt us, but it certainly didn't help us. It certainly didn't help. Yeah, I mean, I think this, obviously, it's, a, it's I, I don't, in my opinion, you're not going to lose money on real estate. Um, right. So I feel like, you know, it's it's a good decision to look into it. I think <laughs> the credit that we talked about today is a big piece. We're going to start. Taylor Arnett loves the purple walls. So if, if we... No, I don't know what to say because yeah. uh, she's now... Yeah, See, that, that's official. So, uh, yeah. so we're back to... The, so everybody's painting purple walls. But I think you get back to your credit. The credit's a big deal. Um, if If you don't have time... Uh, to get things right, you got to take time to get the credit score where you need to be, get the down payment where you need to be. But I think, like you said, it, the the values are still going to go up. You're still going to make money. So Va values are going up. And then the other thing that I wanted to ask you was, uh, if someone is looking for a mortgage in this market, should they start prior to looking for a house? Yes, yes, definitely. Or after? I think obviously you really mean it because I I didn't get the after. You definitely have to get. Um, Get that piece out of the way so we know what you're dealing with. Because you want to know what the cash is going to be, what cash is going to take to get into the house, what's your monthly payment going to be, what are all your options. Uh, does it make sense to wait a few more months and save up money? Does that look a whole lot better or can you go ahead and do it now? I think that's the biggest piece that people miss is they jump out there, they jump in a real estate agent's car, they go around and look at 40 houses, they fall in love with something and then they find out it wasn't what they put in their head. I thought I was going to get a three hundred thousand dollars house for eleven hundred bucks a month. But I don't want. To, but let me ask you this. But question. that's not. But, but those two things don't go together. So know exactly how much you're going to have to put in, how much you're going to pay a month before you get out there. But but one thing is that hello Courtney, uh, hey, um, is 
if I'm going out there and I don't, but I don't, I want to go look for a house, but I don't want my credit pulled because it's going to kill my score. Guys, I, I hear this all the time. I hear, I, I know. What? So tell I me, what, I mean, what's, what's the okay, response? Okay, so, so every credit pull is going to cost you four or five points. But if you don't look at, you don't have any idea. Except during a, about a, what is it, a 21 day window? Yeah, I know there are some people out, believe me, I know there's some people out there I've even talked to you that know their credit score is excellent. Okay? <laughs> now, and that's fine. We can put together numbers and I can give you an idea of what things are going to cost based on the score that you give me. But if that number's different and when we get around to pulling it and verifying that and everything changes, then you're going to be the one that's upset. I would personally prefer to know uh, just to take that mystery out of it. But but also, things aren't always what we've seen because, as we talked about earlier, Credit Karma and some of these other scoring, like the credit card score that they give you for free, yeah. those are not let's just talk. Let's talk all about the time. it. I would say let's talk about it, but I would say you definitely you, you want to know before you go, right? Well, you want to, but I also don't want to hurt my credit. Here's, here's my response to that. If you worried about five points... You don't need to be buying a house, <laughs> right? I mean, let's be real. I mean, I mean, it's just it's just dumb, well, right? You know, it's, I mean, I think it is. And sometimes it's that that financial responsibility, and we're we're shutting down. I think, yeah, I think, I, I, did Ben she and all pay the bill? Yeah, I think our lights are shutting down uh, on us, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Yeah, because we're gonna keep going yeah. as long as we're talking. But uh, you know, it's um, it's definitely important to look at that. I think it's a really good idea. <laughs> I mean that's funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Just they need lights uh, on. Yeah, that's right. Hey, that one loan. Yeah. Uh, so tell them more about the numbers. Let's see what we got here. Uh, I think he's going to. Uh, there, we there we go. They're motion activated. So, uh, what else is going on in the market? Hey, uh, <laughs> Stephanie. Hey, that. Hey, long time. You know, I worked with her in 1998. She's uh, As in up and call your mom. Yeah, that's because that's what there I tell people. Like, hey, oh, okay. what's up? My name's Collier. Like call, call your mom. Call your mom. Yep, I mean one of the coolest ladies right there, uh, Stephanie is, um, and cool mom too. I bet. I mean, cause she was cooled in. She's cool now, you know. So uh, Mark. I see him, Ray, Ray Broussard's out. He's out in California. He's one of my buddies. Ray? I haven't seen him in many years. Many. How All you right, doing, Ray? Ray. Well, I, listen. I appreciate everybody tuning in today. Yep. Um, it, it was really funny to start because we we had some technical difficulties. I mean, we have all the good equipment. And, and we talked about this at the beginning. I'm reading a book right now about failure. And, and it's saying... We're qualified? You, know, you, you, only, you only learn if you're failing. Let me slide over here. Oh, okay. But uh, we were failing. We were failing for about 20 minutes today uh, from 4 to 4.20. Milton says, like on the cruise ship, we put the lights off for the guests that they have to leave. <laughs> As he said, we ran them out? <laughs> yeah, no, no, talking about, yeah, yeah. That was, it's kind of like you and me. We wouldn't leave. Yeah. So they had to turn yeah. the lights out on us? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. Well, Taylor, Taylor's giving us some good comments in there, and uh, that's by the way, if anybody doesn't know, he's talking about Taylor. That's his daughter. Yeah, she, she's, he's, she's uh, in Boston studying. She probably should be studying, but she's watching these us dinguses. She says so, dinguses. Yeah, we don't know what that means. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I don't but even I, know what Lincoln. But I still, I still love you though. But uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Yep. Um, yeah. We'll be back here again. We're going to shoot for 4 o'clock. We usually <laughs> shoot for 4. We're a little bit late today, but... Uh, every Thursday. Every, every Thursday. Thursday. And we're going to have new topics. I know the last two weeks have been straight up real estate, mortgage. We're going to try to bring up some unique content every week Yeah, that's actually fun. And uh, we're going to have a little fun. And we may even go on site. I think next week uh, there is talk that we're going to go... I got a waterfront property that will be awesome because then we can bring a cooler instead of just like a lunch bag yeah. of beer. Yeah. But we need to do it, make sure it's at four and we don't have anywhere else to go. Exactly. But anyway, well, thanks for tuning yeah, thank in. Thank you guys for tuning in. See us next Thursday. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you.